Hello everyone, welcome to Wildwood Studio. I'm Sarah, and in this video, I'm going to be doing some more leather burning. Since I really enjoyed burning on this wallet, I'll put the link in the description to that video if you haven't already seen it. I talked to my friend Graham and he gave me a few more of his leather items to burn on. So here are three of the leather wallets that he gave me that I'm going to be working with in some future videos. But today I'll be burning on a passport holder. So basically just a wallet sized to fit a passport along with all of your other travel documents and things like that. If you like this sort of content, please don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to be notified whenever I post a new video. So the first thing I did here was trace the passport holder into my sketchbook so that I had the right size and draw the design that I would be using. Then I traced the design using tracing paper and transferred it onto the leather. I've gotten some questions lately about how I transfer my designs onto wood or leather since it's usually not a great idea to draw directly onto these materials. And for this, I just use regular old tracing paper, which you can really get at any art store or even the dollar store sometimes. Some people use carbon paper, and tracing paper is more work than carbon paper because you have to trace the design three times. Once over the drawing, and then once on the back of the tracing paper, and then again to transfer the design onto the wood or the leather. If you're tracing off of a computer screen, you can skip the first step by flipping the image horizontally so that you only have to trace it backwards, and then it'll be the right way around on your final piece. This is especially important when you're using text, because you don't want your text to be backwards. With carbon paper, for anyone that hasn't used it, you just put the carbon paper between the picture you're tracing and the surface you're transferring it to, and then trace the lines that you want to transfer. But the drawbacks to this are that you have to have a paper copy of your image, which I don't bother to print mine usually, you know, save the trees, and also that it can be harder to erase these lines, or at least this is what I've heard. And I really don't like the look of leftover black or blue lines behind my burning. If you have another method for transferring images onto your burnings, please let me know in the comments, because I'm always interested in trying something new. Once I'm done with these leather burnings, by the way, we will be putting them up for sale, probably on Graham's Etsy store or something. I really need to put together my own online shop since most of my burnings actually are for sale, except for the ones I keep or the ones I do specifically for someone else. Usually I save them up and sell them in art shows because I really like doing art shows, but they've all been canceled due to COVID, so I think it's probably time that I set up some kind of online store. So I'll be sure to let you know when these go up for sale, just in case anyone is interested in purchasing one. The Witcher wallet unfortunately will not be included because I made that specifically for my husband and I think he'd get mad if I sold it to someone. Also, if you want to see more of Graham's work, he's Graham the Leather Guy on Instagram, so I'll leave a link in the description for you if you want to check that out. So, for the design on this one, since it's for travel documents, I thought I would do a map, and I picked Canada because... because is where I live. <laughs> well, no. I mean, I like Canada, it's a good place to be, but I thought that it would be a good complex shape that would give me enough to work with, so that it would look nice in the burning. I did leave out all the lines for the provincial borders, since I thought it looked kind of more natural, although I put in the US border for some reason. I'm actually not sure why I didn't do this consciously, I think probably just because I think of Canada as being this shape, and removing the US border really makes it less recognizable. But hey, maybe that would have been good. The compass rose I added in the top right corner is pretty generic, but I thought that it would be a good level of detail to work with the map and not overshadow it. So once I was finished transferring the design, it was pretty much just a matter of tracing the design again with my ball tipped pen. I find that this one's the easiest for line work on leather, because the sharper pens tend to really bite into the leather when you're burning. As you can probably see, I work mostly from left to right on my burning so that I wouldn't smudge the pencil lines. And just like last time, I kept it to a very, very low temperature, much, much lower than I usually use to work on wood. As always, it's a really good idea to work with the lowest temperature that you can because the lower you go, the more control you have over your burning and the less likely you are to get spots. Once I'd gone around the whole thing once with my ball tip pen, I also went around the compass rose with my spear tip pen to darken the outline. Like I said, this is a sharper pen, so it really bit into the leather more. I get a little concerned that it'll go through, but it hasn't done that yet. I just think it's probably a thing that's good to use sparingly. I also did do this in a couple other places as well, though. Since I did my last leather burning, a few people have asked me if it smells bad. And to be honest, the first time I didn't really notice, so I've just been saying, no, it doesn't smell. But this time, since I was thinking about it while I was burning, I realized that there is sort of a smell. I'm not really sure what that smell is. I mean, someone asked me if it was like burning skin. I, I don't know, I'm not used to that smell. So that could be it, or it could just be the smell of burning whatever it is they use to tan the leather. Either way, it's really not an overpowering smell. So I don't think that alone should keep you from trying it if you've been thinking about doing this. I don't even think my husband noticed it from the other room, and he usually makes a comment when I'm burning on wood about the very, very slight campfire smell, so it really can't be all that bad. 
After I'd outlined the map, I went around all of the land masses again and did a little shading in the water. I thought that this made the land stand out a bit more and made it more clear what was land and what was water. I tried this out in my sketchbook first before I did it on the leather since I prefer to try things out on paper and not on leather where it can't be undone. I also thought this made the composition more interesting overall since it's just a map and a compass rose so there's not a whole lot of room for shading unless I was going to add, you know, where all the mountains are or something but I thought that that would be a bit too much and I wanted to keep it kind of simple and classic. In the end, I'm really pleased with how this turned out. I didn't burn anything on the inside, but I mean, it's probably the outside of this that counts anyway. Thanks again to Graham for letting me burn on this. There will be at least three more videos featuring his work coming, and I'd really like him to keep giving me leather stuff. So check out his Instagram, at GrahamTheLeatherGuy, and let him know that I sent you. Here's a final picture of the finished passport holder. As always, please let me know what you think in the comments, and if you want to see more of my work, you can check out my Facebook page or follow me on Instagram. Also, please make sure to like this video if you haven't already, and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss all my future art videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.